What's up guys, Tina here. In this video, I'm gonna go over 10 potential NCLEX rhythms that can come up on your exam. I'll show you the rhythm for about five seconds and then shortly after, I'll tell you the answer. But first, if you appreciate the content, make sure to smash that like button as it supports the channel tremendously. And if you're new here, welcome. Feel free to subscribe. Let's get into it. Let's begin with the first rhythm. Take a look. The answer is normal sinus rhythm. The rate is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. The rhythm is regular. The P waves are upright and all similar. Keep in mind, a normal EKG does not exclude heart disease. All right, let's take a look at rhythm number two. The answer is atrial fibrillation, also known as AFib. The rhythm is irregular. It is an uncoordinated atrial electrical activation with twitching of the atrial muscles. Keep in mind, AFib is a chronic arrhythmia that is related to heart disease. Some causes can be associated from chronic hypertension, lung disease, or heart failure. All right, let's take a look at rhythm number three. The answer is atrial flutter, also known as a flutter. This rhythm appears as flutter waves or a sawtooth appearance. The AV node conducts at a ratio of two to one, three to one, or four to one. Here is a pearl to keep in mind. Sometimes a flutter can be the initial findings of cardiac disease. Some reasons for a flutter can be caused by stress, hypertension, chronic heart disease, or hypoxia. All right, moving on to rhythm number four. Take a look. The answer is supraventricular tachycardia, also known as SVT. This rhythm is fast. The rate can vary between 150 to 250 beats per minute, which is a regular rhythm. It beats so fast that the P waves may not be seen and can be buried in the T waves. Some causes for this rhythm can be related to caffeine intake, stress, anxiety, and can also appear in a healthy adult, also nicotine, some patients may experience angina, hypotension, anxiety, palpitations, or lightheadedness. Okay, this now brings us to rhythm number five. Take a look. The answer is bradycardia. The rate is slow, less than 60 beats per minute. The rhythm is regular. Keep in mind, your patient may have a resting heart rate less than 60 beats per minute during sleep, and it's also normal for your athletic patient to have a heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. Some causes of bradycardia can be from drugs, such as your beta blockers, like Metope, your Valsalva Maneuver. It can be induced from vomiting, myocardial infarction, can be some causes. Okay, moving on to rhythm number six. Take a look. The answer is ventricular tachycardia, also known as VTAC. This is a sustained monomorphic ventricular tachycardia with a regular wide QRS complex that has this wide, uniform, bizarre appearance. The rate can be between 100 to 250 beats per minute and the rhythm is regular. Also take a look at this rhythm strip. It's VTAC but polymorphic in appearance. It's not as monomorphic as a regular rhythm, but it can be regular or irregular and still resembles that bizarre appearance. Keep in mind with VTAC, it is important to confirm the presence or absence of a pulse because this rhythm can be perfusing or a non-perfusing rhythm. So VTAC and VVIB are your shockable rhythms, just not VTAC with pulse. If your patient is VTAC with a pulse, you cardiovert, and without a pulse, you defibrillate. I'll include a link on a review of the emergency meds if you want to know more about medication management during a code. All right, let's move on to the next rhythm. Take a look at rhythm strip number seven. The answer is ventricular fibrillation, also known as V-fib. The rhythm is chaotic. There are no P waves, PR intervals, or QRSs because there is no ventricular depolarization or contraction. This is your dead rhythm. That is a shockable rhythm because of no pulse or cardiac output. 
This is your code blue patient. For more content, don't forget to check out the link below for emergency meds. All right, let's dive into rhythm number eight. Take a look. The answer is torsades de pointes. To me, it looks like cooking monster's teeth. Comment below if you think the same. So the QRS has a bizarre appearance, but it has a twisting of points where it has a polymorphic VTAC appearance with longer QT intervals. This rhythm you wanna to respond to quickly and intervene as it can go south quick and become V-fib or systole. Some causes of this rhythm are medication induced that can cause a prolonged QT interval. To list a few, it would include Haldol, Zofran, Amiodarone, and if you have any more you wanna mention, comment below. I'll also, low magnesium levels can also contribute to this rhythm as well. All right, let's move on to rhythm number nine. Take a look. The answer is a Sicily. There is no electrical activity in the ventricles, no rhythm, no rate, and non-shockable. If you see this rhythm, look at your patient and does it correlate, as it can just be maybe loose leads. Otherwise, call a code and follow your ACLS guidelines based on your hospital protocol guidelines. All right, let's move on to the last rhythm. This is a bonus question. So this is your patient that is a 57-year-old male with a history of diabetes and hypertension admitted for chest pain under observation on cardiac monitor. He is due for his 1600 vital signs. You get to the room, there is no pulse and you see this rhythm. What is it? The answer is pulseless electrical activity, also known as PEA. The key words I mentioned was he has no pulse. So with PEA, the monitor will show an electrical rhythm, but no pulse. Some causes I want you to think of are your H's and T's. So hypo or hyperkalemia, hypoxia, hypoglycemia, hydrogen ion acidosis, hypothermia, thrombosis, cardiac tamponade, toxins, or tension pneumothorax, or trauma. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to smash that like button. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.